Here, you're going to learn how to use the new sort by function for Excel. It's an amazing function that allows you to sort a data set using a function while leaving the original data set intact. It's quite a useful and powerful function. And this tutorial forms part of a larger course on teachexcel.com, so check the description of the video for more information on that. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. To begin, we're going to start out with a very simple data set. And here we have a data table that is not formatted as a table, so it's just a regular hard-coded text values. And we'll be using a function over here, the sort by function, to sort it. So let us get a little bit more space. And over here, we have our first basic sort. Let's say that we want to sort by manufacturer ascending. So here's the manufacturer column. Here's all the data. And here's it sorted over here. And it looks like there's lots of values over here. But it's just a single, simple formula. Equals sort by the data set you want to sort by and the column you want to sort it by. So let us delete this and make it ourselves now. It's really amazing. Equals sort by. Sorts a range or array based on the values in a corresponding range or array. Sounds a little confusing, but it's really not. So let's work through it. Here you can see we have a few arguments, array and by array one and the sort order. And as you'll see in a moment, we can sort on multiple columns and decide for each column how we want to sort it, ascending or descending. So first, you select the data set that you'd like to sort. It can be a single column or multiple columns or an entire data table. Now, comma, by array 1. So what do I want to sort this by? Well, I want to sort it by manufacturer. So make sure that whichever array you're going to use for the sorting has the same number of rows as the data you want to display. Otherwise, it's just not going to work, so it has to be the same height. And if you were to do this left to right across columns, it would have to be the same width. Now for the third argument, just choose how you want to sort it. You don't even have to include it, though, and it will automatically sort A to Z or 1 to 10, so ascending. So we can close it up, hit Enter, and it fills in everything for us just like that. Notice Acme, Cyberdyne, Tyrell, alphabetical order. It's really, really cool. And of course, this is a dynamic array function that spills out into the worksheet. So there isn't actually anything here. But as I've mentioned in previous tutorials, you can select everything. So click in the table, hit Control A to select it, then copy it by hitting Control C, then Alt E S V, copy paste special values, enter. And now everything is an actual value. Of course, you can do that in the worksheet, control C, and then right click where you want to put the data, paste special values. So it's very easy to do that, but I'm going to back it up, leave it as our lovely sort by function. Now let's go ahead and change it up a little bit for the next example. We're going to change the direction. So equals sort by, let us go up here, select the table, comma, by array, we're still going to do manufacture. But this time, for sort order, let us set it to minus 1, descending. Close it up, hit Enter, and there we go. Now it's Tyrell, Cyberdyne, and Acme. Now let's do multiple fields. This is where it starts to get more interesting and more useful. Equals sort by array. There we go, comma. Now let's do it by manufacturer. And let us do it descending. Now comma. Now we just choose the next column. Let's do it quantity, comma. And we'll do it ascending. And I'll go ahead and put the 1 in there for that. And hit Enter. And here we go, Tyrell, Cyberdyne, Acme. And then as well, by quantity. So for Acme, you can see it starts lowest to highest, and the same for Cyberdyne, and the same for Tyrell. So with just this 
simple single function. We have now sorted the data by two columns and displayed it in another part of the worksheet without affecting the original data set. And even though I'm doing this just on very basic data up here, so it's not an actual table or anything like that, we will do it on a table towards the end of the tutorial. And the benefit of that is that then when you go to add new data up here, it will automatically be added to the data over here that the sort by function spits out. So I'm not going to do that from the start because I want to keep our references nice, neat, and simple instead of the table structured references that you'll see when we get there. So that's it for the basic setup of sort by, and even in its basic form, it's immediately helpful. So I really like that. Now let us go to returning multiple columns at once. This is, well, it seems complex if you take a look at it, but it's really not that complex. What we're going to do is we're going to sort by, as it says right here, one column, but return two columns. So how do we do that? Let us say here we want to get a color and a quantity, and we want to have those displayed in the same cell, but we want to sort on quantity. So notice 91, 78, 58, it's quantity sorted in descending order and the corresponding color to the left of it. So if I open it up and you see it here, looks pretty crazy. But I promise you it's not. Let's go ahead and do it. Equals sort by. So the array is simply the data that you would like to return. So all we have to do is create something to return. We want to return color. All right, now I've got color. Now, what else do I want to do? Well, I want to concatenate it. So I'm going to use an ampersand, which just means attach to this. I want to attach to this a colon and then a space. So I put that within quotation marks. And now what that will do. So if I select this, you're going to see a list of colors. I'm going to hit F9 right now. You see all the colors. Now I'll do Control Z to back it up. And let me select all of this right now, F9. You see the colors with a colon and a space after them. So we are changing how it is presented. But you see, we still have the array. We still have the array of colors here. And they are not sorted right now. It's presented exactly how it is here. So we haven't gotten to the section where we're going to choose in which order this array is presented. We're still building it. So control Z to get back to here and let us finish building. Let's see, what do we want on the end of it? Well, we want the quantity values. So I do that and now let us hit F9 to check it out again. Now we have the color with this corresponding quantity. White 21, ivory 22, white 21, ivory 22. As long as we have the same number of rows in each selection, it is not going to be a problem. Control Z to back that up. And now that we've created the output that we would like to sort, let us figure out how we want to sort it. How do I want to sort this? Well, I want to sort it by quantity. OK, I'm going to sort it by quantity. Now, comma, what do I want to sort it by, ascending or descending? Let us sort it by descending order. So highest to lowest, minus 1. And you may notice there are no dollar signs here. Originally, there were before I deleted and redid the sort by function. That just means that these references are not absolute, and previously, they were absolute. There was no crazy magic going on there. So now, let's close this up, and we should get a lovely table of colors and corresponding quantity sorted in descending order by quantity. There we go. How great is that? With a single function, so nothing down here. Of course, you have to be careful if someone inputs something and it messes up the function. But it is just such a lovely function, so beautiful with our original data set intact. That's the thing. You can already sort and do all sorts of complicated sorts. It just changes how the original data set is sorted, and you don't always want to do that. The sort by function is really fun to play around with. There is so much that you can do. Of course, use it on sample data, on test data first, in case you mess things up. But now, let us go to 
custom. And on the custom tab, we're not going to do anything too crazy. What I want to do here is to show you that you control the sort order. There's no magic here. So here we have the same table we've had for the other examples. And here we have essentially the same function. However, you may notice when I click this, the order for sorting is over here. So the red rectangle is here. The data we're going to sort is over here. It doesn't have the same number of columns. That doesn't matter. It has the same number of rows. That's the important part. So let me zoom in now. We have the same number of rows. And all we have here, so we have the blue rectangle on the left, the data we'd like to present and sort, and how we would like to sort it right here, and the order, ascending or descending. So what happens is that the first row in your sort range is assigned to the first row in your array range, the data you want to sort. So each row here is lined up with a row here. And based on the numbers or values here, that's how it's going to sort the entire table. So just so you see how easy it is, let me back this up, delete it, and let's create the sort by, and then we'll play around with the order. So sort by, and this is our table, comma, by array, right here, comma, and how do I want to sort it? Let's do it ascending. Enter. No problem. Now look at the part numbers 1 through 10. That's in order. So that will help you notice the changes we're about to do. Now, see here, 1, 2. Well, let's change it 2 to 1. 2, 1. Now notice these have been reversed. So it reversed the entire row. Change it up again. Let's say this is 3, 2, 1. Now ASC-3, 2, 1, then 4, 5, 6. It's really, really cool. So let's do it like this. 10, 9, go down. All right, 10 to 1. So now, through this separate column, you can control how the data is sorted. And you could have multiple columns by which you want to sort and multiple sort orders. You can make things as crazy and complex as you want to over here in your helper columns. And you could even use the sequence function to automate this and make it a little bit easier. But I'm not going to cover that here because that requires using a spill operator, which is covered in another tutorial. For now, I'm going to leave this example as it is with hard-coded values for the order and a nice simple function with a custom sort order. All right, now let us go ahead to the last example where we're going to use a table. At the moment, we have a very basic data table, just like in the previous examples, but we're going to turn it into an Excel table. So click anywhere in here and hit Control T or go to Insert, Table. It's a very good idea to have headers on your columns, by the way. So make sure you do that before doing this. Then you go down here, check my table as headers, make sure it's checked, hit OK. And you're going to get this lovely table format. Don't worry about the formatting itself. You can easily remove that by going to table design. So click anywhere in here, table design, down here, table styles, and you can turn it off. It's very, very easy. And if you don't like to filter buttons, you can do that as well by unchecking filter button. So don't let the formatting throw you off. It's really great because what it's going to allow you to do is to automatically add new values and sort them to your table over here. So let us create the sort by function. The thing to note here also is that when we do this, so let's do it first, select all of the data, it gives you a different sort of reference. So here instead of the range reference that we're used to, we get table one, which is the name of the table. Now, comma, let's say that we want to sort by manufacturer. Notice here it's the name of the table and the name of the column, MFR up here, MFR right there. So that's a structured reference for the table. And it can seem kind of confusing and intimidating, and that's why I stick with the range references for the earlier examples instead of table references. So sort order, let's go with ascending for this one, starting with Acme going down to Cyberdyne and Tyrell. Now for the array, we will do quantity, 
And let's say I want to see the largest one first, so minus 1 or descending. Close it up, enter. There we go, Acme, Cyberdyne, Tyrell, starting highest to lowest for the quantity for each. Now let us go ahead and add a new, let's say, Cyberdyne product. Okay, two, three, two, three, three. Okie dokie. ASC dash 11 Cyberdyne. And notice it's already added to the table. And size T1000. That doesn't make sense for a size, but it's got to go somewhere, you know. <laughs> Color, steel. All right, quantity, probably a thousand. That makes sense, right? All right. So we have our new entry automatically sorted for us right here in the middle of the table. I mean, these formulas, dynamic arrays, with the spill formula where it goes all the way down here into these cells just like this and automatically adds data when it's formatted as a table. It's really amazing because this table is still unsorted just how we input the data. The user can just input the data here and not worry about changing it at all and have it nice and perfectly organized somewhere else in the workbook. Now one thing to notice is that this is input as a number, whereas the other reference numbers are input as text. So you would want to validate the data before the user can input it so that they can't mess things up like that. But that's not a part of this tutorial. The function, sort by function, worked perfectly and put our new Cyberdyne T1000 entry exactly where it should be in the table, and that's what matters. That's all for this tutorial, but do remember this is part of a larger course on teachexcel.com, so if you're interested in that, check the description for this video for more information. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.